What's up YouTube? The Random Outdoorsman is back and we're really excited today because today we're going to be... I'm going to be practicing making a knife and I am going to be working on forging some tongs. We finally, finally, yes. uh, the shipping took a while but I'll give it a break because it was inexpensive. Yeah. We got a little gas forge. Let's come over here. Ignore the pink bucket. This is my new little gas forge. This thing is awesome. I cannot wait to try it out. I'm sure it will work well. I'm going to be forging tongs, like Steven said. He is going to be working on making a karambit. He's not going to make a karambit. He's just going to work the metal a little bit because he doesn't have as much experience as my limited experience yeah. yet. So first, we're just going to get this cut and then start off making the tongs. All right, about to light the new forge for the first time. And by the way... Yep, there we go. <laughs> this is by CGR Customs. It's called the Little Inferno Forge. I will put the link to it in the description if you want to check it out. It's not too bad of a price. Um, got here when it was supposed to be. So, that's great. Let's see how fast this thing warms up.
Done with one tong. It's looking pretty, or one side of the tong. Got that hole pounded. You see I got it straightened up there. Uh, it's looking like it's going to be pretty good. Now I'm just going to go through the same thing with the other tong. This one will be a lot faster. All right, next piece is in. I will not take as many cuts with this one. Just first forging, last forging, because it's going to be the same process. Stephen's still working on his. We'll just kind of skip over that because he's just practicing. Next thing you see, almost be done with the tongs. All right, so they're not quite done. I actually got the holes drilled perfectly because the ends ended up completely straight. The hole, uh, I pounded it through pretty easily. The only problem is, um, you see they're a little bit different lengths. So I got to heat them up again and then pound out this top side here a little bit longer and then just straighten it out a little bit so they'll squeeze farther together. Besides that, it's working out pretty well. I was able to get the... Uh, able to get the second tong part forged a lot faster this time just because already having done it once so on to that next heating well we seem to have run across a problem as I was finishing straightening up the last a little bit on the tongs, I realized that there was a crack going from the center of the bolt hole all the way to the end. I do not know how to weld yet, weld yet and um, is this is going to be a problem. So here are the results of today's endeavors. Here is Stephen's little practice piece that he was using to get ready to make his karambit, which you will see in a future video. We did that. We forged his karambit today, um, but you won't see that in this video. That will be in another video. I actually ended up making three of these. You're wondering why three? You can't make a three, uh, three part tong. No, you can't. The reason is because I cracked this one. So a quick bit of advice I will go over is that if you're ever pounding a hole in metal, and especially when the sides are as thin as this, make sure the metal is nice and hot. Don't try to pound it when it's cold. It'll break. You won't be able to fix it, and it'll take you just as long as it did to make that first one, maybe even longer if you try to fix it. Luckily, I had one leftover piece that was just a tiny bit too short. You see, it's just a tiny bit off down there at the bottom, but it's okay. This is my first set. It's not my final set. Um, so I'm about to put these together with bolts, and you will see how they turn out. Yes, so finally got that bolt put in and um, got a couple things tweaked so it would hold better. Had to straighten out these a little bit more. But you see, I mean, they don't look too bad for my first ones ever. So, you know, there's a slight gap here, which lets these touch, which is great. Uh, they're nice and wide here in the middle, so you can get my finger in there to open and close them. Um, I'll show you real quick. They hold stuff pretty well. They hold round, small rebar, thicker standard size rebar, so I can make tongs with tongs. Illuminati confirmed. Uh, thicker metal pieces like this, you just choke them up there in the tongs, and they work great. Um, thinner metal, 3 16 inch. Just reach the tongs across, and it holds nice and tight. That's great. So, and then railroad spikes. Uh, make sure to stay tuned because we're going to be making some knives out of these. Steven's probably going to want to make an, another karambit um, because that's actually what he was working on today. He was working on a karambit. Uh, he got a little bit of practice with rebar. Um, so the next time he'll probably be doing it with a railroad spike. So these are going to work out great. You see the railroad spike fits perfectly in there, and then also the width is perfect. So... You know, I can grab the railroad spike from all different directions. It's going to be much easier than those other pliers I was using because the pliers are bent, which makes it difficult because to even hold the metal straight, you've got to be holding it here or at a weird angle. These will make it easier because I can hold it at the end and the side. I mean, also, I mean, they're really strong. I mean, I got my workbench here. This thing's heavy. It's got all kinds of tools on it and stuff. Yeah. I can pull the workbench with just these. So definitely yeah. going to be strong enough to hold on to whatever metal I'm going to be forging. Uh, so, last couple things. What I learned, just please make sure, get the metal red hot before you pound the hole. Don't try to pound it when it's cold. Um, I just kept pounding once it was cold because I thought, ah, I may as well get the hole done. It will crack it. You will be disappointed. You don't want to be disappointed. You don't want to waste time. Please don't do that. Second, th to get the shape for tongs is much more difficult than I thought. And I thought I could just curve it, be nice and easy. Please, 
draw a sketch of what you want your tongs to look like. You know, draw a sketch on your workbench in Sharpie so you can follow that design and see what each piece is supposed to look like. It will save you so much time. Please do that. I wish I would have done that. Would have worked out a lot better. Um, and then also make sure I figured out that the best way to cool rebar like this instead of just letting it air cool once it gets uh, you know almost there where you can grab it with your hands but it's still too hot I found that actually cooling it with some oil you know just like pouring a little bit of oil on it actually helps stop this oxidation you see it only got a tiny little bit of red there you almost can't even see that um, but if I hadn't done that like for this piece this piece oxidized all up it's got divots and cracks besides the one big crack so you don't want that just put a little oil on it that'll help um, little thing I'm gonna put the link in the description like I said to CGR customs eBay website section so this forge worked out amazingly I mean heat it up in like five to ten minutes I stuck these pieces of rebar in I seriously I barely got done forging the one piece of rebar the one side of the tong sticking it back in before the other one was ready for me to start forging I mean I was just able to really just keep going you know Stick the one got cold, stick it back in, pull the other one out, and just keep cycling like that. Make sure to check out their section. Also, they have a bunch of other attachments. They have larger forges than this, just this. Um, I mean, they got like full size ones, uh, varying shapes and sizes. They also sell attachments like, you know, larger nozzles for huge propane tanks, and then this one for the small propane tanks. Make sure if you do end up getting one of these that you get the combo kit that also comes with the large 7 uh, inch nozzle. And because if not, a normal blowtorch would not get this thing hot. But this nice big 7 8 inch nozzle is made to fit in here. It'll work out great. Um, it heats it up really fast, allows more propane to come out. He also includes great instructions, a couple quick things that you need to know about the nozzle and the forge. I mean, just from this. So shipping's free too, which is great. So check him out. Like, subscribe, comment on our channel. Tell us what you thought of this, what you want to see next please. See you in the next video. Happy trails.